We're going to drop Visual Studio and use Visual Studio Code to develop a .NET application. How easy is it to use? The first step is to install Visual Studio Code. By doing a search for it and clicking on the link, scroll down to the bottom. Not only is it available on Windows, but it's also available on Linux operated systems like Ubuntu and Red Hat, and also Mac OS. That means you can develop .NET applications on these operating systems. We also need to install the .NET SDK. By doing a search for it and clicking on the link, we can select which .NET version we're going to use. We're going to use .NET version 8. Then we can decide on what release version. We're going to use version 8.0.6. It's available on Linux, Mac OS and Windows meaning that we can develop .NET applications on these operating systems. Just remember to install the SDK and not the runtime. Before we start coding in Visual Studio Code, we want to install an extension. So we go to Fuse and Extensions. The extension that we want to install is the c -sharp Dev Kit. We do a search for it and install it. Installing the c -sharp Dev Kit helps manage and test your code. In addition, it installed the C-Sharp extension as well as the .NET install tool. With the software and extensions installed in Visual Studio Code, we can now create the ASP.NET Core Web API. And we'll do that using VS Code's terminal. To go into the terminal, we go to View and Terminal. We wish to make a new directory, so we call mkdir, and the directory we wish to create is round the code.vs code. We're going to change to that directory and then we're going to create our ASP.NET Core Web API. So to do that, we call .NET space new space Web API. We include the hyphen N option, which stands for name, and we're going to call it round the code .vs code .web API. By default, this will create it with minimal APIs, but if we wish to add controllers, we just add the controllers option. We want to open up our project in Visual Studio Code. So we go to File, Open Folder. We find where our Web API has been added and we select that. If the Explorer doesn't appear, just go to Views and Explorer and it will appear on the left hand side. We want to create some services within our ASP.NET Core Web API. So we make a new directory of services and we're going to CD to that. We want to create a new interface. So to do that, we call .NET space new space interface. Pass in the end option and the name of it will be IHTTP service. We also wish to create a class as well. So we're going to call .NET space new space class. And the name of it is HTTP service. If we go to the services folder, it's created our class and our interface. We're going to start off with the interface. We're going to create a method. It's going to return a type of task string. And we're going to call it read async. Notice that we're getting the IntelliSense. We go to that HTTP service. We wish to implement the IHTTP service into it. So we want to store a read only field with our IHTTP client factory type. So to do that, we call private read only. The type is IHTTP client factory. And we're going to call it underscore HTTP client factory. We're then going to inject that as part of dependency injection. So we declare the constructor and we pass in the parameter once again of the IHTTP client factory and that will be the parameter name. We then store the reference to it. We then need to implement the read async method. So we'll mark it as public asynchronous. It's returning a type of task string and it's called read async. Create a new instance of the HTTP client. So to do that, we call the instance of the HTTP client factory, create client dummy JSON. We'll be setting all this up in program.cs in a little while. We wish to get the response. So to do that from the HTTP client, we call await HTTP client, get async, and the endpoint that we're going to be calling is slash product slash one. Now we want to check if it's a successful response code. If it's not, we'll return an empty string. So we call response.isSuccessful status code. I'm going to do a null reference check on it. Assume it's false if it's null. And we're just going to return a string.empty if it's not successful. Otherwise, we're going to return the content. So we call response.content.read as string async. Now to add this into dependency injection, we need to do a few things. We first of all need to add the HTTP service. So we call builder.services.addScoped. 
and the interface is iHttp service and the implementation is HTTP service. We also need to add the HTTP client into it. So we call add HTTP client. The name is dummy JSON. So this represents the name that is here when we're creating the client. And we need to set up a base address for that because at the moment we're just sending it to a relative URL. So to do that, we get the instance of the HTTP client and we call base address. The domain is HTTPS dummy JSON. Com. We then wish to create our web API controller. So we're going to change the directory to the controllers. And in order to create a web API controller, we call .NET space new space API controller. The name of it that we wish to add is HTTP controller. We go into the controllers folder. That's created that for us. So we're now going to add the code that we need. It's already set up some of the things we needed, like the API controller attribute and the root going to pass in an instance of our HTTP service. So we need to store a reference for it first. And then we'll create the constructor. So the constructor is HTTP controller and we pass in a high HTTP service, which we set up as part of dependency injection. And we'll add that to the reference. And then we're going to set up the endpoint. So it's going to be a type of get. Once again, we mark it as async. It's going to return a type of task I action result. We'll call it get product async. And we'll return a 200 response by calling the HTTP service and an art read async method. We're now going to run the application. We can do that in the terminal and we can also debug that in Visual Studio Code. We wish to build our application to make sure that it's compiling properly. So we call .NET space build. You can see there's no warnings and no errors. So we want to run the application. In order to do that, we need to go into properties and launch settings. And we've got a number of profiles already set up. We've got a HTTP one. And we've also got a HTTPS one. This is the one that we wish to launch. It's got to run on local host code on 7003. So in order to do that, what we do is we call .NET space run. And we include the launch hyphen profile option and we specify the name as HTTPS. That's now running on localhost code on 7003. If we run that endpoint, it's returning our JSON response. If we don't wish to include the launch profile when running the application, we can remove the launch profiles that we're not using. So we go back into properties and launch settings. We're going to remove the IAS settings as we don't need them. We don't need the HTTP profile. We will remove that. And we don't need the IIS Express. So that just leaves us with the HTTPS. Now we can just run .NET space run without the launch profile. And it will be running on HTTPS localhost colon 7003. We can test that out. And that's still outputting our JSON response. Visual Studio Code also allows you to debug an application. So we're going to services and HTTP service. We're going to add a breakpoint to this line here on line 20. Then we go to run and start debugging. We need to select C sharp and also the project. That's now running and it's going to start our application in debug mode. We're going to run the endpoint. And if we go back into Visual Studio Code, we can see that it stopped at our breakpoint. We can now see some of the properties that have been set within the response. We created an ASP.NET Core Web API in this video. And if you want to know more about how to do that, watch this video next. Visual Studio Code is a good alternative to Visual Studio. With the correct extensions installed, you can enable IntelliSense and also debug an application. And with it being available on Linux and Mac OS, you can develop .NET applications on those systems. Just remember those .NET command lines.